I'm back this week with a cute two-tier Highland cow themed cake. I'm starting with a five inch round cake that's already been covered in sugar paste. So I don't bore you with the same techniques over and over again, I actually have full in-depth tutorials to get you to this stage, such as making ganache, applying ganache and covering cakes with paste. You can always find them linked in the description box below. I'm gently airbrushing with a water-based turquoise airbrush colour, just gently misting it so it looks like a cloudy sky. It's going on top of a 7 inch cake which I've already covered in green and I'm just placing and measuring my dowels all to the same height. As the cake going on top is our 5 inch, I'm using 6 dowels. I'd run out of ganache at this stage so I'm just sticking my tears together with regular icing. Make sure your top tier has dried up a bit so you can push it central without leaving fingerprints. We're making a hill stencil with just a sheet of A4 paper that I've cut this wiggly pattern out of. It also works great for waves. I'm going to spin it around and secure it into place with a couple of acupuncture needles. I'm then taking green airbrush colour and following the shape of the hills and colouring everything below it. Gently remove your template and apply another for the other side. This just allows us to add more scenery without using too many layers of sugar paste. For the top tier, I'm adding a slightly different shade of green, which I've just cut the same humped shapes out of and I'm unrolling it around the bottom. Trim where it overlaps at the back and cut your hills so the pattern continues. Stick everything down, Pat the cut edge with your palm to soften it and clean up any overhang from the base. To add extra hills and scenery, I'm using a Dresden tool, pushing in deep in this layer for hills more towards the front. Same thing again in a different green around the bottom tier. Everything I'm using will be linked below and I also have an Amazon shop link where you can pick up most of my must have cake items. To bring the river from the horizon to the front, start out marking it in quite thin and widen the lines as you get closer to the front hills. You can change direction slightly as you hit each hill. Go back over these lines with a scalpel and remove all the paste. Now you easily just fill this gap with a sausage of blue paste, squashing it in against the hills. Don't worry too much about getting this neat as we're going to be adding rushing water lines to it. Mark in where the hills join and add your flowing water lines all the way to the bottom of the board. I'm now covering the board using the toilet seat method and as you can see I'm just using lots of different shades of green which I'm either just adding white paste to to lighten it or a darker green to deepen it. For a full tutorial on covering the board you'll also find that linked below. Where the river ends, bring it out much wider and remove that piece from the board, replacing it with the blue colour, adding in more water lines. For a tiny waterfall, you can add in a small piece of paste and pull the lines upwards as if the water is splashing back up. It's my favourite cobblestone mat again, you'll find it linked below. I'm just pushing this into some grey paste that I've kept rolled quite chunky and with a scalpel I'm just choosing a few bricks to cut around instead of cutting it straight so it looks like an old farm stone wall. Stick this against your cake with water and if you want to be a little bit extra like I am you can mark in the tops and sides of the bricks along where you cut your edges. After all bricks don't melt together on the top do they? You can also add a little bit of extra texture if you wish. Add these brick walls all around your scenery. Next I'm going in with the trees. I've just rolled a tapered brown sausage which I'm snaking up the side of the cake with water. Use a smaller one for an extra branch and smooth and merge it to your main trunk. Use your Dresden tool to give your tree some real twisted texture. 
I'm going in with an even deeper green now and just squashing a random cloud shape which I'm sticking to the top and adding lots of that fluffy leaf texture with a large star piping tip. Add these all around the cake too. With a similar green, I'm just adding lumps here and there to the sides of walls for little bushes. Just to create a slightly different texture, I'm using my Dresden tool for this one. To make a little bird, I'm starting with a white ball and pulling out a small point for its tail. And then squeezing the rest of the ball up into a little cone, bending it over and trying to squeeze in a tiny sharp beak. I've just perched this onto a wall and I'm painting it with orange and brown gel colours so it looks a bit more like a robin. Make sure you've got a nice fine paintbrush for this. For more countryside animals, I'm making some little bunnies. I'm using some lighter brown paste and keeping the body shapes nice and simple with a cone for the body teardrops with paws marked in with a scalpel. Please don't do as I'm doing here, cutting it on your hand. I've just been doing this a long time. The arms are really tiny little cone shapes just stuck to the top and the head is a small ball with your little finger pressed across the centre. Ears start as a tapered sausage at either end with a line marked in the middle. These just stick to the head with water and you can play around having pointed or floppy ears to give them character. The eyes are painted on with black gel and a tiny nose is applied in pale pink. Make a few little bunnies to add to the rest of your scene. Lots of people always mention the amount of details in my cakes and this is just because I cannot stop. I'm now adding some far away distant fencing on some of the hills just to add more interest to the design. And whilst I have my paint out, I'm going to add a few little birds to the sky too. What's the countryside without flowers? These were just cut with a simple blossom cutter in different sizes and I'm adding them around the board, pressing in yellow centres. We're not going to stop there. We're going to make little clusters of grass by layering up three cones of paste, chopping the bottom flat and sticking them around the scene with water. Yes, I even go as far as manipulating the grass points exactly where I want them. With some white paint, I'm now adding detail to the water splashes for the look of rushing water. Finally, we are moving on to our toppers. Push a polystyrene ball into a larger ball of ginger coloured paste and roll it between your hands to smooth out any joints. Start to tease the paste downwards, almost in a cone, and flatten the point against your worktop. You should have a shape something like this. The flattened parts are going to be the legs and we're just marking all the lines in with the Dresden tool. Push a kebab stick right up inside the polystyrene ball so it's nice and secure. Not only will it hold your topper onto your cake, but it also makes it much easier for handling and applying all this fur texture. Make two the same and push them down onto the top of the cake together. I'm then squashing the legs down a little bit to make them a little dumpier and shorter, just because I think they look cuter. The heads are just ovals of paste pushed onto the front and I'm merging the paste onto the body to hold the head in place. Again, add lots of fur lines. The ears are tiny teardrops flattened with a centre line pulled in and they're attached at either side of the head with water. You can skip the middle ones as the heads are pushed closely together. 
A tail is done with a tapered sausage with the ends pulled out and I like to have them look like they're swaying a little bit. The nose and mouth starts as a chunky oval and then the bottom's pulled down into a very, very soft point. Across this point, I'm cutting in a line with a scalpel. With the sharp end of the Dresden tool, push right in at either end so it looks a bit like a smile. Push that line upwards so it's now got a slight hump. Stick this to the front of your Highland cow with water and secure it further by pushing in two large nostrils. Do the same for your other Highland cow before finishing them off with little horns. These are just cones pushed onto the top of the head and curled upwards. It is ridiculous just how much time I spend messing to get these how I want them. And we're done. If you think this design looks familiar, it's because I've already made a three tier version of this many, many years ago that's still floating around on the internet. I hope you enjoyed this one, it's nice to get back to the tutorials again, so please give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment because it does keep me going. And I'll see you again next week. Bye guys. <laughs>